Hey everybody, how is it going? Welcome back to my channel. Well, another day, another bloodbath, yeah, whatever. Anyway, the market is getting absolutely tattooed again, and it just seems like it's just fading. I mean, that's the most aggravating part of it all. If we had some uh, extreme selling or just some kind of climactic volume coming in, it'd be one thing, but it just seems like it wants to drift. Almost looks like it wants to bottom, and then it starts drifting lower again. But I was starting to see some climactic signs in the market. I'll go over that in a little bit. But uh, looking at the CNN Business Fear and Greed Index, this is absolutely putrid. This has to be like the buying signal of a lifetime. But I checked this uh, just a couple of days ago, and it was had a reading of uh, in the lower end of the fear category, and now it is pegged at extreme fear. If this was your gas gauge, you would have to be pulling in to the gas station very quickly, no matter how high the gas prices were. But uh, just looking at this timeline, let's go with the timeline real quick. But uh, I wish this thing went back further, but you can see this fear index is at six. It's at extreme fear and it's absolutely pegged and going all the way back to last year, as far as it goes, hasn't even been this close. Uh, it went down to 14 on June 19th, 12 on uh, September 20th, and uh, this has to be a buy signal. And we're going to take a look at the market, what it did after these extreme signals when we jump on. But uh, scrolling down a little bit further, you can see the market momentum is at extreme fear. I've never seen these where there were so many at extreme fear, but this market has just been getting absolutely pummeled and everybody is getting run over by this thing. Looking at the stock price strength at extreme fear falling off a cliff like a lot of stocks out there. Stock price breadth, uh, extreme fear as well. Lowest reading on this one. Put and call options, extreme fear, highest reading on this chart as far as it goes back. But the market volatility is only at fear for some reason. I guess these people haven't had the crap scared out of them just yet, but this thing is really close. The only reason why it's not as extreme fear hasn't really uh, taken out that peak that we had on March 7th, but one more big down day will take that out for sure. Safe haven demand is an extreme fear. This one is like in danger of going off the chart as well. And junk bond demand. That's the strangest thing is when that's the reason why you have bonds in your portfolio is to protect you in times like this. And um, bonds aren't protecting anybody right now. They're getting slaughtered just like everything else. So I don't know if this isn't the buy of all buy signals, it's uh, then I don't know what is, but I am still waiting for some climax selling. And when that does happen, I am going to load up to the long side because I don't know, I might never see a signal this strong again in my life. And I guess I just got to take a shot when you see a bearish signals this bad. Um, you got to at least take a small shot, and I'm probably going to take a bigger shot than normal once I get some extreme uh, selling confirmation. And jumping over here to the S&P 500's historical P.E. ratio, going back to 1950, we can see that we are still uh, rather high, historically speaking. Now, keep in mind, this hasn't been updated since May 5th, so about a week old, um, and it's about 59% above the average as far as May 5th, but obviously that has come down because the market has come straight down since May 5th. Uh, we're probably a little bit closer to this uh, one standard deviation, this yellow dotted line here. So uh, still a little bit overvalued, but we are getting a closer to being, um, you know, near the historical average. Still got a way to go. But if we scroll up to the top, you can see they're still classifying this market as overvalued. And if you're not familiar with the P.E. ratio, the P.E. ratio is a classic measure of securities value, indicating how many years of profits at the current rate it takes to recoup the investment in the stock. So if you have a P.E. ratio of 10, theoretically, it takes 10 years to recoup that investment in the stock. Now, keep in mind when you see that ratio, um, it's not accounting for any future growth. So that's why when markets are good and things are going good, you know, they'll pay a little bit higher for a faster growing company. They'll pay a higher P.E. for it. Obviously, they're not doing that right now, but the uh, the current S and P ten year uh, rate, uh, current S and P five hundred ten year P E ratio is thirty two. Now this is fifty nine percent above the market average of nineteen point six, putting the current P E at one and a half standard deviations from the modern average. But like I was saying, I bet we've gotten a lot closer to that lately. Uh, but this 
does suggest that the market is overvalued and uh, it just says the below chart shows a historical trend but just going back to that trend um, usually these things tend to overshoot you know when I first saw this chart uh, a little while ago I was thinking maybe we could have been uh, right around this point right here because I was under the um, under, under the impression that we might get one more run in the market uh, but I don't think that is what is going to happen right now because a lot of these charts that I am seeing in the market are not only broken, but they are completely destroyed. And the negative news is definitely starting to pile up. Uh, I found this tweet and it says that uh, it, people are still processing this, but this is the Lehman moment for crypto. Hearing about a lot of funds possibly insolvent from the Luna meltdown. And uh, I've been looking at uh, a lot of programs and there is a ton of activity swirling around crypto. I haven't seen this much uh, activity around crypto in a long, long time. And of course, all of it right now is negative. So, I mean, this is, um, you know, just one of those situations where maybe all of the negativity is being priced in. And of course, that tweet was about uh, Terra Luna. And this article says, what happened to Terra Luna and can it be salvaged? And I don't know much about Terra Luna, but all I do know is that the negative negativity is really starting to pile up around the crypto market. So you normally see, you know, when all this negativity comes out, it gets priced in and eventually you could be uh, reaching a bottom. So I think uh, cryptos could be very close to a bottom as well. And bringing up this chart on Terra, you can see this thing has fallen off a cliff. It's starting to look like one of those, uh, you know, losing money tech companies that just reported earnings. This thing is just getting absolutely pummeled. Hopefully none of you guys out there uh, had any money in this thing because this doesn't look like something that's going to be coming back anytime soon. So just more and more news, uh, negative news just piling up. But for all of you that are ready to jump out a window, I did find some good news out there. I did find this one saying where Nancy Pelosi uh, to propose a bill allowing the president to make gasoline price hikes illegal. When all things are going wrong, Nancy Pelosi is the one out there looking out for the little guy. God bless her. You know what she ought to do is make stock price declines illegal, but uh, she couldn't do that because then she wouldn't be the only one making money out there. All right, before I jump into the current market charts, I just want to take a look at the NASDAQ from last year and take a look at the last four times we got extreme fear readings on that business week uh, indicator that I showed first off in the video. And the first one I want to talk about is the one from July 19th, where uh, we had a reading of 14. Uh, keep in mind, today's reading is a reading of only six, so it's lower than all of these, but that was on uh, this day right here, and um, I don't know what all you pussies were so scared about on July 19th. I had three little down days in a row, and that had an extreme fear reading. I mean, what the... Anyway, uh, the next one was September 21st. So that would be on this day right here. You can see that it was kind of drifting a little bit, and then we had a big gap down. So I can understand after a big gap down like that, you know, maybe uh, getting a little spooked, but... Uh, shouldn't have been extreme fear back then. And then we had two readings of 13 on October 4th and October 13th. So that would be this day right here and this day right here. So, um, we had an extreme fear reading of 13 after this little sell off. And this could have gotten worse. So I could understand, you know, a little bit more fear in the market right here. But, uh, here, you know, I'd have been thinking about that the market was going to roll over again. But as you can see in all of these four readings, the market was higher. Um, the next week, you know, in this one, actually the, the market was substantially higher. It got into a very nice rally after that, uh, fourth reading. All right, well, right now I want to take a look at the dollar index, and uh, this is the UUP on my TC2000 uh, trading software. This it tracks the U.S. dollar, so this is the uh, U.S. dollar index bullish fund, and as we can see, this thing has just been screaming higher over the last few months. And this makes a lot of sense why stocks have been crashing uh, because they're priced in dollars and you know everything else that's priced in dollars has been crashing as well but this also looked like this is getting a very very toppy so this is another indication of why i think we are getting pretty close to a, uh, a reversal in the market we could have a substantial rally soon 
All right, we'll jump into to the uh, current chart of the NASDAQ. I have the QQQ up right here. Um, you can see the market didn't really do a whole heck of a lot except continue a fading lower. Uh, you know, I'm still waiting for that climax sell on the NASDAQ or just a big green reversal hammer or a big uh, green uh, reversal candle before I really do anything. Um, if that happens, I'm going to load up on some call options and I'll definitely let you guys know about that. And uh, I don't know if it's going to be the absolute bottom, but you know, with how stretched to the downside this market is, I have to take a shot on it because you don't see these opportunities very often. And uh, it might end up being a big violent reversal to the upside because I do think the market is, uh, you know, pricing in the absolute worst case scenario right now. It could happen, but, uh, you know, if we get just a, a cluster of some halfway decent news, I think, you know, the market is ripe for a bounce up and we are pretty much out of earning season. So we shouldn't be getting, you know, that cluster of, you know, earning revisions going down and down and down. So I think that's another, uh, you know, weight that's kind of been lifted off the market that nobody he's talking about uh, should be just about over so um, let's take a look at the weekly chart of the Nasdaq and you can see a logical bounce area would be this 200 period simple moving average even though that is way way down there uh, I couldn't imagine if we would get down there before we had a bounce up but you never know I mean the bottom could really drop out of the market we have support going all the way back to 2020 and also that 200 period simple moving average right there um, but just taking a look at some of these uh, market leaders, or at least they used to be market leaders. Uh, taking a look at Amazon, you can see this one has fallen off a cliff. And uh, man, can't tell me, you know, with Amazon Web Services still growing like a weed, that this thing isn't overdue for a bounce. Even a bounce all the way up here to the 200 period simple moving average would be a nice bounce from here. It'd probably be about. Uh, looking at about 20% or so, so that would definitely be a, a decent play for some call options. Um, you know, another one is uh, Netflix. And of course, this one has really been taken out behind the shed and shot, but you, or, or shot in the face. But you can't tell me that Netflix's growth is completely over. I mean, uh, you, you could probably make the argument that they're getting rather saturated in the U.S., but globally, I think there's still a ton of room to grow. They're going to be cracking down on people sharing um um, their passwords or accounts, I should say. So um, I don't think Netflix is over, but there is no doubt that Netflix was way overpriced. But now it is getting, um, you know, rather reasonably priced for a company that still has some good growth out of it. Um, another one is NVIDIA. You can see NVIDIA has fallen all the way down to 160. I dipped my toe in at uh, 200. Haven't really added any more yet, uh, but I probably should have added a little bit more today. But I'm just you know, really waiting for, uh, you know, some climax selling in the market before I do any more heavy buying. But um, NVIDIA, tons of growth still ahead for that one. Um, a couple of names that I've been watching are Microsoft and Apple. And you can see Microsoft breaking that support to the downside. So this one is, uh, you know, potentially getting ready to really fall off a cliff. I think that might uh, induce that climax selling in the market. And then the other one, uh, Apple, uh, same thing as well, finally breaking support. So Things are getting pretty uh, extended to the downside out there. So, you know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if we get that uh, bounce real soon. I did make one purchase today. So before I end the video, um, I did buy DR Horton. I bought DR Horton uh, as it came down to that 200 period simple moving average. I'm bullish on housing for the long term and I haven't started a position in it, but the millennials are supposed to be uh, getting into their peak house buying age um, over the next 10 years and uh, it's supposed to be the biggest generation uh, out there so I think that's going to be very bullish for housing you take into the account that there is ex still extremely low supply I know there's going to be some pressure on the housing market in the short term with rates screaming up but I don't think they're going to stay up forever could be wrong on that but Either way, I wanted to get some exposure in the housing market. DR, uh, DR Horton, uh, I think, is the biggest uh, builder out there. I think they have at least 10% of the market share. Right now, they have a forward PE of only four. So they are, uh, you know, very reasonably priced. And they play a dividend of about 1.3%. Uh, Not a monstrous dividend, but it's still something, uh, you know, you can get paid as you wait for this trade to play out or this investment to play out over the next, you know, five to 10 years. I plan on holding this one for a long time. Just dipped my toe in the water, like I was saying. Could show sure, there should be some headwinds um, in 
in store for the housing market, hopefully, so I can really load up on this one if this thing like drops below $50 a share. But I didn't want to wait any longer to start a position in a housing stock. Really like uh, DR Horton, really like Lennar. But uh, I'm going to end the video right there. Um, if you guys see anything interesting in the market, please let me know down there in the comment section. I really appreciate it when you guys take the time to do that. But I'm going to end it right here. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. And uh, hopefully tomorrow we catch a bottom. But until next time, uh, take care, everybody.